Um, welcome to our new podcast. It's called uh, Some Assembly Required. My name is Andrea, and uh, we are currently on location in Prince Hillary County, Ontario. In my craft room. <laughs> in Paige's lovely craft room. It's amazing. I wish you guys were here. It inspires you to make all the things. Or just buy more things to put in your craft room, right. um, which is what I do. Um, so yeah, so I'm Paige, and yes, we are in Prince Edward County, where Andrea lives part of the time with me, and we're doing a podcast about all of our hobbies, uh, which primarily are knitting and sewing, but we have a few other hobbies that we enjoy, so we'll be talking about a few different things. Um, yeah, I like to sometimes say that I have crafting ADD because... You know, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you can find me on Ravelry as Stitch Parade and on Instagram as Stitch Parade as well. Um, I have been knitting since 2005 and sewing since 2008, and I do have a full time job, so I sew and knit in between all the other things. Um, yes, and I am on Instagram and Ravelry as Juniper Forest, and that's Forest with two R's, because that's how my cat spells his name, so that's how we rolled around here. Um, I have been knitting, you're good about knowing the date, because like, I don't remember. I have to that. look it up, oh, okay. because that was my number. I was like thinking about it, and I just reflect <laughs> on like, what I was doing at the time, and try to think back how long ago that was, and I keep saying it's like, the same amount of time, but I'm like, it can't be, because I keep getting older, and it still can't be like 12 years. Every, but I like what you think. Yeah, right? Yeah. Just so I think it's about like 13 years, maybe-ish, like where I've been like hardcore consistently knitting. Um, sewing, uh, not as much, like obviously I sewed in like home ec and wanted to break the sewing machine, but um, basically, She's my inspiration to uh, sew some more, both quilting and making clothes. Um, some other big hobbies that we'll probably be talking about on the show are reading. We both read a lot. Um, baking and cooking. Uh, I don't do a lot of baking or cooking. I just eat all the food. <laughs> you do some. <laughs> she does some. Um, and I also am like a novice beekeeper and I like gardening. Uh, so we'll be talking about some of that stuff, or I'll be talking, <laughs> I'll be talking about some of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, basically it's kind of like a catch-all, but like again, knitting and sewing are our primary hobbies, so that's a lot of what we'll be talking about. Yay! <laughs> okay, so show me your, um, finished objects. What do you have? Okay, so I have mostly socks because I've been, uh, doing some stash busting this year. Knit the stash 2018 because my stash is... Out of control and I am I am the person who buys the single skein of sock yarn everywhere I go um, so I have so much sock yarn so I'm trying to get rid of it so this oh wait I got the wrong one here these socks nice. look at that sorry I'm trying to hold them up <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job at it these are Kate Atherley's classic top-down sock Okay, is that a pattern that you had to like think about and doing the round, like the actual uh, color work? Or no, no, this is no, this that? is so the yarn is the Cascades okay. Heritage Prints, and the colorway is colorway thirty, you which guys, is look like at this. Look at how cool that is. The most unoriginal name for something that jazzy, but anyway. So these socks are awesome because I started them, I think, in like February or March of this year and our winter was horrendously terrible. So yeah. when I started knitting these, I was like, oh my God, there's color. Anyway, so I was super pumped. This is the book, sorry, Kate Atherley's book that the pattern is in. I've had this for a super long time. She's actually, uh, when I lived in Toronto, was a knitting teacher at a few of the local yarn stores. Purple That's how Pearl. I learned how to knit socks. I took a course by Kate Atherley. Right. And... So yeah, she even signed my book. Wow. Knit fearlessly, obviously. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she's great, but I've had this book for ages, and like I'm so terrible with books because I never actually do anything mm -hmm. with them besides put them on my shelf. So I decided this year that along with knitting every all my stash that I'm going to be using pattern books that I have. So I been actually doing a ton of stuff from her. So her the book. yarn actually does this funky thing. Like you don't yeah. actually have to no think about the color work. That's great. I love that. Not not thinking is uh, cheating when knitting. That's yeah. amazing. Okay. okay, and so my second finished object is this pair of socks. This pair of sock. <laughs> the sock. You know what? I don't think the camera does it justice. It's 
It has so many Sorry. nuances, this yarn. It's like there's green and there's red and you don't see the green yeah. at all. No, you don't. Um, so yeah, that's the, so sorry, that's Viola in her merino fingering base. I'll be, and, I'll be holding it. Yeah. <laughs> in the dogwood colorway. And that's Kate Atherley's um, classic toe up sock. So the other one was top down, toe up, you got to do the whole thing. I've never done a yeah. toe up sock. You haven't? No. That's how I learned. The only pattern for socks I've ever used is the Kate Atherley simple sock recipe. Oh, that's hilarious. That's all I ever that's make. So funny. I don't make a lot of socks. No, she doesn't think they're worth the time because no. you could knit a sweater. Exactly. Uh, Are you going to talk about this? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, thank you, co-host. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, she recommends a Russian bind off. What's it? I think that's what it's called. And um, it's kind of really when it was not locked, like, I don't know how to like so you can tell it's quite loose so it blocked out all right and when you wear it it looks fine but I kind of was like not super stoked about it but you were gonna rip it up I was and I I think I was gonna I had started to do it but then I I think I blocked this one out while I was finishing the other one just to see how it would look and it was it's fine so I think they look fantastic I'm sad that yeah. the camera doesn't pick up the nuances of the green because yeah. it's like Amazing. Yeah. This, so this I had yarn this, is like drool. Yeah, yeah, I had this like, yarn in my stash for like I don't even know how long. I got it at Frolic in Toronto one year when these lovely ladies grabbed me along with them because I was by myself and we went to uh, um, Viola's booth and I didn't know what the heck that was and so but it was pandemonium and so I grabbed this skein and one other skein which I made a shawl out of and yeah. So anyways, I think, she, and then after she did that show, I think she actually moved to England and worked at a fiber mill or something. So she wasn't actually dying for some time. She's so. back in Ontario. She was yeah. showcased in one of the Line magazines. Yeah. You know I, <laughs> <laughs> I kept calling it Lane. I was told that's not how it's yeah. said. She was informed. That anyway, that's not how yes, I was informed. Anyway, there was an article about her and she's got a workshop somewhere near Creamore, I don't know, mm -hmm. and that, so it's a small town in Ontario, and it used to, it's a farm with a storefront, and she's using the storefront as her dyeing studio, which yeah. is Yeah, and I think she's like Viola Emily or something on Instagram. Anyway. I don't know. Lovely yarn. So. Yay. So that's two socks. What's your yes. third finished object? No, that's it for me. That's it? It's you now. Oh, okay. It's you, it's you. So I'm all about the sewing this week. So I took this week off work and um, just a summer holidays and I've spent it at our house here in Prince Edward County. So I should clarify, I actually live in Kingston Monday through Friday. Um, she left me. I left. And, uh, <laughs> and then on the weekends, my husband and I come back to the county, to our house here in the county, which is great. So I just took the week off work as a little retreat and... Uh, and I was at the house by myself with my dog and my sewing machine and my needles. Oh, Jessie was with you? Yes, oh, it nice. was awesome. Anyway, it's been great. And uh, and so I've got a couple of uh, sewn items. I haven't been sewing too much. My sojo has been a little bit. I love it. Yeah, it's been pretty dry <laughs> just because I don't have a lovely craft room in Kingston. I don't feel like sewing there. And it's just easier to knit. Anyway, so I, I went all out. And the first... F.O. that I have is the Willow Tank Dress it's beautiful. by uh, Grainline Studio. So the fabric I used on this is a cotton linen canvas by Nani Iro. Um, it's fabric made in Japan, designed by a Japanese woman called Naomi Ito. And I actually finished this dress almost a year ago. And then it sat in a closet and all it needed was it the just closet. the neckline binding. So... Then I just finished the binding and I hemmed it and uh, I love it. And, and I look how great this color is on her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and here's the pattern. The pattern is great. If you're thinking of making it, go for it. All the grain line patterns are um, so easy to follow. They're fantastic. And... Uh, and it's a great dress. And it's because the fabric is so... It's a canvas, so it's stiff. 
there's not a lot of drape to it, but I kind of love it. And yeah, I wore it last nice. night out for oh, a drink. You? Yeah, I wore it last night for a drink with a couple of friends, and uh, <laughs> and I felt so glamorous. I just I was like, oh look at me wearing an art print on my body. Anyway, and then I talked to Paul about it, and he goes, oh, is that the sack of potatoes dress? <laughs> Husbands what? are so supportive. What do you mean? He's like, that's the, with, that's the one that's not body skimming, right? Like, it's not, like, you know, it's just, like, Because you're, potatoes. like, all like, about the skin type. Yes. <laughs> it's like a sack of potatoes, and I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's Go beautiful. make yourself one. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see, though. Hold on. I just want to show that there's a detail here. Oh, so yeah. there's, like, a little flap. Okay, and flap. here's this other thing. Like, I was actually worried about this because it kind of hits... It hits at the hip, and that's I'm pear shaped, so that's the broadest part of my body. And I thought, mm, I don't know, it's just gonna make me look like, you know, calling attention to the widest part of your body, not cool. Can't even see it. It just blends in, mm -hmm. and it just lends a, a really lovely A line shape. And the darts hit right on. I didn't have to modify anything on this. It was amazing. Okay. And then the next thing I have is another dress. Um, it's the Fen dress by Fancy Tiger. Um, not to be confused with Giant Tiger, uh, <laughs> which is what I used to do all the time. Which is where we normally buy all of our clothes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is lovely. It is Sorry, made show. with, um, these guys actually have a crafty store in Denver, Colorado. Good reason to go to Denver. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's made out of a linen cotton blend that I got at Fabricland a gajillion years ago. And what a find because it's yeah, full of drape. It's beautiful. It's amazing. The pockets are yeah, so fun, this. okay? We need to put fun And in it's here. got like a high low I hem, like that too. although there's a couple of there's a different variation as well where you could do like a shared tail uh, hem. Mm -hmm. And it just fits really nice and it's a little bit it's not right at your waist. It's a little bit like an empire waist. Mm -hmm. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Empire waist. Mm -hmm. Um and the gathers are quite flat. It doesn't make you look like you're pregnant or anything. And it's uh it's very simple to make. There's no facings. It's finished with a bias. Uh, bias tape this just folds under i made it in a day which is like bonus so <laughs> that's my second finished object and a lot today. of these fabric uh, fabrics patterns um are good because you can see like you have for the dress and then you can <laughs> let's go a little closer i can't point to the right thing um there's the dress and then the top so you have some variation of the things that you can do yeah. with the pattern yeah. and you can show them on the back too. yeah so there's like, like a v-neck variation i don't know yeah. if you can see that v-neck variation round neck variation mm -hmm. share tail uh bottom or you know high low hem so that's great because even yeah. like if you buy this pattern you can make a few different things that yeah. don't it like look exactly the same here's so the other nice. thing i made it in a six, straight size eight mm -hmm. i think next time i make it i'll probably make a size six top mm -hmm. and just make a size eight uh skirt because i need more room at the bottom but because you have the gathers, mm. there's no need to grade. You can just... And tell people what grade means. Grade means to lay, means. lay the pattern down and then kind of go in between the sizes. Please to go tell to the your, people. The people. Hi, people. Uh, you, can, um, you can just grade between sizes by uh, making your line kind of go between the smaller size to the larger oh, okay. size. Okay, so it's like... When you're tracing you, the So pattern. you're meeting, you're just like going in between sizes correct okay whereas with this because you have the gathers i can just yeah. make a size six top size eight, size eight uh bottom oh, okay right okay. and and then adjust the gathers to fit the top right and with i should have mentioned with the grain line dress um with a willow dress i made a size six top graded to a size eight at the uh, hips okay and i love it it's it's actually the fit is really really lovely so excellent okay should we talk about our next Finish my oh, Okay, so we're actually twins today. Twinsies, samesies. We're wearing these kimono yes. tops that right, we made kind of two weekends ago. It's like, yeah. you know, lower <laughs> at the back. Sorry, yeah. lower at the front. No, at the back. Yes, yeah. the higher at the back. <laughs> <laughs> at the front. Um, and a lovely rayon. This print mm -hmm. has actually made its appearance a lot in Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I've seen it on a lot of the sewing all the cool people are yeah. wearing it all the cool people <laughs> so of course Paige of course I it. have it yeah um yeah so we took a class at uh yes please sewing studio which is in Kingston Ontario and it's actually Mandy is the owner and her studio is below knit stitch sew which is a new um 
yarn store in Kingston on Princess Street. So Mandy has her studio in the basement and she offers sewing classes and she has a small selection of really beautiful fabrics and some patterns and stuff like that. So we took this kimono uh, top class with her and it was amazing. Yeah, so really. it was with her friend Carrie yeah. and mm -hmm. it was just a three hour class. Hi Carrie. <laughs> Uh, super easy, no pattern. You just you just lay your fabric down, mm -hmm. cut it. Yeah, like really like scary just go at it. easy. Like, like cause was... I'm total A type, and she's like, oh, just do this, and I was like, oh. Yeah, but know. it was amazing, and at the end of it, yeah. we the three of us had new uh, kimono tops. Kimono tops, <laughs> and they're super breezy. And the best thing about it is that I'm so excited that there's a garment fabric mm -hmm. shop in Kingston. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of places will just carry cotton, cotton, or then you have fabric land, which is not great. Mm -hmm. um, but Mandy has not a lot of fabric, but it's beautifully curated. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's just fantastic. And she was talking yeah. about the fact that um, she's going to be looking at a shopping trip for winter fabrics, and that's going to be fun, too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then she was asking us for some tips on classes we thought that she might do so we gave her some tips on that but she has some great stuff like she was doing some of the pants from the hundred acts of sewing yeah. and um she does also a class where if you have a garment that you're interested in sewing then you can take a class to learn that specific garment yeah. so that's really great for people so you're not only uh sewing things that she's offering yeah. and she was really flexible for us because we couldn't actually make the class that she had scheduled so we arranged uh a different date so she's flexible on stuff like that too which is really and nice she's so much fun yeah, yeah it was we so had fun. a really good time so it was a, a nice um kind of girls night to do something crafty and maybe not just go out to dinner and stuff like that but in fact we didn't go out to dinner no we didn't, <laughs> we, didn't. we just walked around our kimono top yeah so here's a question are you gonna do that like linking things to the bottom yes I will. okay so uh, I'm doing it. Full disclosure, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I'm just going to I don't know either. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll do a link to Mandy's... Um, yeah, her site. And she's also on Instagram. I think she's just Yes Please. Yeah, she's Yes Please. On, so. uh, on Instagram. Which is and great. I just took a... Um, did a post on Instagram of this today and linked her, obviously. So you can see it through there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, so let's move on to whips and hoes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, like I said, I've been doing a ton of socks. So this is a hoe. Can you explain what that is? Uh, I yeah, so Andrea texted me and was like, what's a hoe? Okay. Uh, so a half object. So I have one sock of a pair. Sorry, I'm just trying to get used to showing this on the camera. So if you stop for a bit, it'll actually... Look at that. Lovely, okay, so the pattern, pattern is the Hermione Everyday Sock, which everyone and their grandmother has made. You know what this Except is. you. I don't. Yeah. I don't <laughs> but she doesn't knit. Some. So that's by Erica Luder. Um, and the yarn is, um, let me, sorry, it's, it's Kurtzner SRK on your toes four ply. Um, sorry, this is awkward. Um, and the colorway is another original green print. Uh, so I have no idea where I got this yarn again because it's been in my stash forever. Um, but and it's a little bit rough. It's stiff. It's like but uh, it's a lovely color. But it has like tooth to it, so it's not like your typical like nice soft okay, soft yarn. There is like a little bit of stitch fun going on on the hill flap. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Look at that! Like so, that is an eye of partridge heel. It's I've beautiful. never done that before. Yeah, it's really nice. And that's a great sock pattern. Um, I was really enjoying it. And like it does have the patterning, but it's a very easy pattern repeat to remember. So it's not like you need to like keep your pattern with you all the time. So if you kind of want to branch out from like a vanilla sock and but still have some fun stuff going on, this is a great pattern. I'm totally gonna copy you. I'm gonna make this. Yeah, it's good. And it's a free pattern. Bonus. Yeah. And like tons of people have made it, but just in case you don't know about it. Um, and then, I don't know about it. <laughs> and so my second one, uh, so this is again the Kate Atherley's classic top down. Again, I've just, I've been doing a lot of vanilla socks just because I have a lot of like heavily variegated sock yarn. So, um, you know, sometimes it, if you're doing patterns, it's a bit too crazy for me. So, um, yeah, I've just been using Kate's pattern pattern a lot. The only difference with this one is that the heel, I did the heel from the Knitting Ex Expats. She does um, two socks, 
two at a time socks on circulars and this is the heel that she used so I tried that. So the yarn, Fana? <laughs> so the main yarn uh, for this is um, Miss Babs uh, Yummy Two Ply. It's really cool colors. So um, again, I got this, I got this in Virginia. Oh like ages ago you guys just like little nuances of gray in here yeah. and cream um, and yeah it's great and um it was actually when it was in the skein I wasn't I didn't realize it would be quite this Stripping. intense but I like it intense. and then the heel is um hedgehog fiber sock yarn and the colorway is jelly So that's that. So I just need to do the second ones of those socks. And then my third one is um, my fun. <laughs> so I am the worst with starteritis. Like I, the, every time I come into my craft room, I am starting something else. Andrea is a very monogamous knitter. Yeah. Anyways, I need to just stop doing this to myself. But anyway, so um, the reason I started this was because the sock, the heel and toe yarn was from part of the Find My Fade, like the yarns in my Find My Fade. So I took that down to do the heels and toes, and then I was like, oh, well, obviously I need to start knitting this. That okay. So this is the start. Um, the gray is yarn indulgences. Unfortunately, I don't, I couldn't find the tag, so I don't know what color weight it is. And this is Art Fill Bell, but again, I don't know what color it is because I. <laughs> Lost the tag. I don't know what, and that's what that looks like. And you like. got that at Twist last year, right? Yeah. So basically, all no, not basically, all of the yarns that no, except for one, um, that I have for this, I got at Twist with somebody who's a crazy enabler. Buy all the yarn. Yeah, yeah. She bought she bought like one skein, and I had like forty. Excuse me. We bought a we did buy worth <laughs> of really nice yarn. Yeah. Clouds, Which and, we have clouds and baby's eyes la eyelashes. Yeah. Okay, so the yeah, so then my next color, so this is the next crazy color, which nice. I haven't decided yet if I actually yeah. love it. I think but it's great. If you see, I don't know if you can tell, um, there's like darker, oh it's like crazy burn your eyes on there. There's darker pinks in there, and they're actually yeah, that's a good idea. Look at you. So the darker pink actually does kind of match the pink in here, um, which I realize it doesn't have to match, but I'm having a bit of a moment with that. Um, and then this is my next color, awesome, which is like the lighter pink will, or the brighter pink will match with that. And this is a uh, La Bienname, the BLF Tough Sock in Pop Grunge. Okay, that was also available at Twist, and yeah. I kick myself for not getting two skeins. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. Yeah, and it has like um, the yellowy green in there, which you'll see why later. So that's the next skein. And then the one after that is more hedgehog fiber sock yarn. And this one, the colorway is Oracle. And again, it's, so it has the pinks and then the green, the bright greens. So that's the next one and then again more hedgehog fiber sock yarn and this is uh the pesto um yeah the bright greens aren't really showing up that well on yeah, the camera very good at being <laughs> as, long, as long as we're both being awkward then it's fine yeah so this is pesto you can tell that i'm going for like a wham tribute in my face and so that I am not, I will not be singing on this podcast because <laughs> I have the worst singing voice ever. So do I. Um, and then this is my final color, which is black because there's like the black speckles in here and you need black and everything, obviously. And this is um, Plucky Bellow Mr. Spacely is the colorway and it's just black. It's kind of, again, it's kind of, there. oh, there you go. You can see it there. Anyway, so that's that. So, so that's the fade. That's the fade. I'm really happy with all of this so far. Like, not knitted up, obviously, but this is the only one that's kind of giving me a little bit of. Um, I think it's amazing. I but think I think I it. just need to do it. And I think get you over. should do it. I just need to get over myself. Yeah. And and I have to fess up that I'm a little bit like you guys probably watch uh, the Chelsea Pearls, 
and Miriam can't find her fade in the early episodes, that's me. I will probably <laughs> never do a fade because I just get so overwhelmed. Everything needs to yeah, be... Yeah, it is overwhelming. Yeah, it's too much for me. I think if I hadn't been at Twist and, like, walking around with and, all the and like, again, it is yeah. mostly all um, hedgehog, so, like, obviously, like, a lot of the colors are similar, it would have been hard for me because I, I even find, like, with three color shawls, I'm just it's like, uh, okay, much. I, I yeah. can't do it. No, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you. Okay, so, sorry, I'm just looking through our notes. Okay, so my first work in progress mm -hmm. is... A pattern by Sam Lamb. It's called a Sophiasburg sweater and it's a classically yoked sweater. I am using Brooklyn Tweed uh, Shelter so and the purple color it's called uh, Plume and the gray color is just called Sweatshirt. Which or no, up. maybe it's no, Snowman. Right. No, you're right. It's a Sweatshirt. sweatshirt? Oh, okay. Um, anyway, there's a good story about this pattern. Um, number one, uh, Sam is just adorable and I was following her on Instagram for a while and all her pictures are beautiful and then one day she posted a picture of her face and I'm like, uh, we used to work together like 20 years ago so I immediately texted her and I'm like, we used to work together. She has no idea who I am but that's okay. I remember her because I've got a bit of a Rain Man memory. Um, and then the other thing that's really cool about her is that a lot of her patterns, and she's got a few patterns, are named after places in Prince Edward County. So she's got the South Marysburg slippers, she's got the South Bay sweater, which is quite lovely, and then this is a Sophiasburg sweater. So those which those is. are all... Um, so all, like um, South Marysburg and Sophiasburg and like there's a few other arc wards, wards in the wards county. that are in the county. And I live in Sophiasburg, so mm -hmm. I thought... I live in South Marysburg, I need to you be need making those slippers. slippers. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Um, and that's a free pattern, I think. Anyway, so I'm loving this. I actually just steam blocked it today because Paige told me I had to. A spa trico, thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought about it. And I tried it on because I'm about to do an increase that's supposed to happen all around and it shouldn't happen right underneath your bust. Well, it turns out that I'm not there yet. Mm. So I need to knit a little bit more because, you know, gravity, age. So yeah, my bust is somewhere around exactly my knees at yeah. This moment, so, so but I'm loving it. It actually is gonna fit quite nicely, and I can't wait to be done with it. So that yeah. is that is my That's first beautiful. fo. Love it. The construction is really brilliant. She actually does short rows in the back, oh, so that the nice. neck is actually in the back a little higher. Yeah, I like that. Um, and the, Cause that's always like cool like you know if you have the yeah. one that's kind of even on the front and the back then that your yeah. back is showing in the way it's, I'm really really enjoying that and mm -hmm. I'm a super slow knitter but it turns out that I'm actually not a slow knitter after all because I only started this on Sunday I just need to quit my job and knit all day and mm -hmm. then I will be able to pump out sweaters in the week yeah. and a half anyway going back to work on Monday so it's gonna slow down <laughs> Um, my second, uh, work in progress. So I did a prototype for this work in progress. I just finished this little, uh, project bag. Okay. It's, look at the little socks. I'm actually going to use it for socks. Can you hold it closer? Socks. You can see it. It's just, yeah. Look at that. Anyway, so it's socks, um, and then just plain yellow and then some denim. And I gave it... A little pocket. Yeah, inside, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a pocket there for all my little things can you that show I use. It, like, hold on, where's the pocket? There. So like, <laughs> you know, because I always have like a little book with me. There we go. Put, like, yeah. You know. <laughs> and then I put my little label in there. Anyway, so that's my prototype for a small project bag, but I actually don't have any large project bags that are big enough to hold sweaters, and I knit sweaters a lot. So I decided to use that as a prototype. I didn't see this yet. She was hiding so it on me. So this is going to be my new oh my project bag. It's so pretty. For sweaters. I don't know if you can... There we go. Okay, the bottom is just canvas. And they're all Fair Isle sweaters. They're all Fair Isle sweaters. <laughs> so the bottom is just canvas. The top is going to be this fun fabric. And then on the inside, it's going to be this fun print. Oh, that's really nice. And this one's going to have two pockets. So this is one side. There's a pocket there. And then the other side, there's a bigger pocket on that one. Okay. 
And then these are my ties, so it'll be... Is this like bias? It's of? just bias binding yeah. that I, I totally, I didn't want to make my own, so I just, yeah. Mm. And because the canvas is quite sturdy, no need to interface that. Um, I just interface, actually I interface the whole thing. And it's just this interfacing that I use from Shape Flex that it actually behaves like fabric, so it doesn't make your fabric mm, all yucky nice. and gross. Her so, smaller bag actually doesn't even feel like it. Like has you any actually don't even notice that there's interfacing on that. So, so that's yeah. gonna. I'm hoping to finish that tomorrow before I go back to work and to transfer my Sophia's work sweater into that one. I will say this: I love pouches with zippers. I'm not sure I will enjoy a large project bag with a drawstring, but I wanted to try it out. So, um, I will let you all know later but a, a lot of people like it because they can fold i mean you can do that with but a zipper, I fold my zipper one yeah yeah i don't yeah. know so, anyway. i got nothing for you then we'll try it on we'll see how how it all goes and then my next uh work in progress even though i haven't cut the fabric yet i'm gonna show you because it's happening tomorrow and because the pattern has been traced which is the first i never cut into my pattern proper i always just trace it first in other paper this is the so house seven uh tea house dress Okay, it's like a kimono style sleeve and a wrap, like an OB wrap around the waist, uh, an A-line at the bottom. Um, the fabric that I'm going to use, I got from Mandy at, uh, oh, yes, please, sewing studio. It's a cotton hemp. Um, I was doubtful if I should get it. It's gray, obviously, because, you know, my hair's gray. I'm a little bit gray. This is gray. And Paige like said, gray. just wear Something accessorized colorful. with like anyway. a million shawls that you have but so it's a stripe and I want to play around with the stripes so on the pattern you'll mm. see that there's the front yoke and a panel and I think I'm gonna do everything vertical but I want to do the yoke and the sleeves and the tie horizontal but I don't know if I should also do the bottom panel horizontal on the horizontal so I don't know what you think Okay, well, we'll explore that. I'll report. <laughs> if any of you has any suggestions, let us know. <laughs> let me know. Um, I'm going to be cutting into this probably tomorrow because I want to wear it to this outdoor event I have in a couple weeks. So, the outdoor it's wedding. Gonna... Anyway, okay. yeah. It's going to be nice. It's not a fancy one. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. That's it. That's it for me for works in progress. So. Okay, so uh, the next thing <laughs> is what stash? Uh, anyway, stash enhancements because obviously um, I just saw something <laughs> on someone's Instagram feed yesterday that uh, was so me because it said that using yarn and buying yarn are two different hobbies, which is uh, very accurate in my case, which is why my stash is a bit ridiculous. Anyways, so actually, this is a funny, a funny story. My yarn stash is not as ridiculous. I, it's big. Well, it's not big, but it's, but it's under control. Like I actually don't go crazy, and I don't buy single skins. Yeah. I always buy a sweater's worth of, uh, of uh, fa uh, yarn, and mm -hmm. I always have a project in mind. Yeah. Okay, but like the second time I met Paige, I brought her into my craft room here in the county, and behind the closet's door was the fabric stash, and that is. Yeah out of control it's ridiculous I she just has a lot to... of shame about that <laughs> totally like it doesn't <laughs> weigh on me so i'm trying to you know work through the stash but because mm -hmm. we had taken this class at yes please and then you know you i bought more fabric, buy the fabric and then so i'm thinking i'm gonna use that first so that it's like yeah it's like it never happened yeah anyway go ahead <laughs> Exactly. I get rid of your shame. Okay, so um, I bought a few things recently. So I got some more hedgehog um, nice. sock yarn. Um, it's really pretty. So I basically bought I bought this at Rosehaven Yarn Shop, which is the local yarn shop in Picton. And I bought this because I actually went in to try to maybe get something different for my Find Your Fade and then came home with one of the skeins, the Oracle skein that I already had. <laughs> Obviously, it would go well, though, because it was one I already picked. So anyways, I just went and swapped it out for this because I thought it was really cute, and I like orange, and obviously, I need more sock It yarn. looks amazing. It's I like yeah. the little turquoise and yeah, orange. Yeah, right? It's going to look so great. Yeah. Um, so I got that. For and, socks? Yeah, for socks. Yeah. And then um, Andrea recommended a store in Peterborough, which is, I don't know, like two hours from here. Yeah. Um called Needles in the Hay and I was 
sort of not really close to there last weekend when I was on my way camping, but close enough to make it worthwhile to go there. So I stopped in. Did Mike go with you? No. No, I was by myself. <laughs> And so I was telling myself, you're not going to buy any yarn. You don't need any yarn. You have like so much yarn, but whatever. Uh, so anyways, Ian was the Oh fine... my God, I love Ian. He was so much fun yeah, he the was... day that I went there. He, he just was has all the answers. Totally the sassiest yeah. person ever, yeah. which I loved. I was actually, he was on the phone with somebody and I was killing myself laughing because he was just the sassiest. So, um, yeah, so they have a great selection of yarn. They have, they don't have a ton of like, I would say kind of this kind of stuff, no. like indie dyed speckly kind of things. Uh, they have more like they're a Brooklyn tweed yeah. supplier or carrier stockist, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then they have also, I think almost they have the full line of Brooklyn Tweed, like including Corey and Peary. Yeah, and, and there's one that he was telling me that like almost limited missed. edition. It's the one that's like um naturally dyed. I can't remember. The name. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, yeah. so they have that too, and then they have I think almost the whole line of the fiber the fiber, co with yeah. fiber company. So, and what's great about them is they have um sweater quantities. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which is great to know because I hope to make some sweaters in the winter. We'll see. What I found about Needles in the Hay is that they had really done a great job at curating mm -hmm. what they carry. It's yeah. not a ton of speckles and craziness. No. It's really uh, classical, beautiful, yeah. elegant. Like what you th like, I think of like walking in the meadows in like the Highlands, where mm -hmm. we're in like a yeah. sweater that you knitted with the stuff that they carry. Yeah. Like it's that sort of like tweedy. Yeah. And it's not like a huge store. No. Um, but again, they have like a lot. They have enough. A selection I think to make like most people happy about yeah. what they have and yeah. I love that they have sweater quantities of like basically everything yeah uh, so I <laughs> was totally looking at something else but then anyway I got I ended up getting a uh, meadow which is a lace weight and it says a textured blend of baby llama silk linen and merino wool oh my god amazing so I got this because I don't really knit or historically have a knit it's not showing up as nicely maybe there uh anyways uh with a lot of silk blended things or linen so i thought i would try oh, something I new touch this. Oh my God. yeah so it's not like actually super soft because I, I think, think it's, soft. it's soft but not in like the cashmere kind of soft no. right like no. because of the linen and the silk but, um, yeah, so I thought, you know what, if I am going to buy something, I'm going to buy something that is different from what I have normally used I love historically. It. What so, are you going to use it for? Um, so I was kind of, so I always, whenever I buy stuff, I come home and then like search what I'm going to do with it. So uh, the one I thought was an Emiliana shawl by Lisa Haynes, and I'll put the link in so you can uh, look it up. Um, so I haven't, like, bought the pattern yet, but that it's kind of like a two-toned... Anyways, you guys, this nice. this charcoal is so beautiful. Yeah. It's got all these nuances of like lighter gray. Yeah. So it's it'll amazing. Tell, that's why it's like it's I thought it would be amazing. great to pair it with that. Love it. And then the other thing I bought from the fiber company was the <gasps> Cumbria oh. onto the hills, and it's a lustrous blend of brown mash and wool, merino, and mohair. Okay, so. Obviously, you can see, and Andrea well knows, that I have a problem with this color <laughs> in that I need to buy it at all times. So I have probably, like, six different skeins of... Yeah, I'm looking at one. Yeah, I, it's, like, in variations of this color. Anyways, it's amazing. It's, it's either, like, bright pink for yeah. me or this mustardy color. It's funny how you get attracted to things oh. like that. Eh? Like, and I, I always do dual tones, like royal yeah. blue, hot pink, and it's hard for me to, like, move away and purples and stuff like yeah. that. It's hard. I know. Use. Well, and that's the thing. Well, obviously, in black, hello, yeah. and gray. Yeah. But, like, that's what I said to Ian, because I was like, you know, I would, the other thing that I was looking at was the bright pink. And then I was like, no, 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 you have so much of that already. You're not getting that. And then, actually, I did, I was buying, I had already paid for this. And I was looking at this, and I thought it was something else. 
like another brand and I was asking he's like oh no it's this and the one that I saw was actually worsted oh but I don't do a ton of stuff in worsted and I really wasn't at the point where I wanted to invest in like a sweater quantity but he's like oh they have the same thing (laughs) the finger ring thank you Ian so yeah so that and then he was also really helpful because he told me about a pattern which is uh, the Basin Fell, which I'll link here by Claire Devine, Devine, Devine probably. And they actually, it's... Um, is it a shawl? It's a shawl and it uses two skeins and the fiber company actually like, I guess, created this oh. the shawl for this yarn. Oh my God, it's beautiful. I and it's really color. nice because it's like mostly a simple garter pattern and then it has like some braided kind of cables down like yeah. three it's really nice so here's my beyond this color it's amazing and i love it and i love mustard but i can't wear it like i just it's I just it i don't know fine i just feel we like i'm this already all this the color time. it's like i don't, I don't know. think i always think you know much better in pink yeah but i think everyone <laughs> looks better in pink anyway <laughs> anyways um yeah, so I bought, had to obviously buy this. And then the only other thing I got was, um, I should take the place off, but anyways, the Chow Gu lace. So I just want to try them. Like a lot of people have been talking about them because I've been knitting like a ton of socks. I've been trying them different ways and seeing what I like. So far, I really like two circulars hmm. the best. I was like a hardcore DPN, but uh, I have been getting I mean. a lot of ladders, which hmm. is bothering me. Um, and then. So I thought I would try this. I'm not a big magic loop person, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't love those. magic loop. I'm a total yeah. like DPN old school. Yeah. Okay, so my stash enhancements include a couple of things. One, it's the guilt-free fabric I got from Mandy. It's a lovely teal color. Mm-hmm. It's linen. Hold it. I don't. It's it's showing up more. Can you hold it closer? Yeah, it's showing more like bluey gray. But I it's think, it's like a green. Yeah. T- it's like that color almost. Like um, mm-hmm. it's still looking know. blue to me there. It's, it's more amazing. of a bit. It's a, I think it's the color of my wall yeah. is affecting that color of. You the, need to repaint the room. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> she just finished it. Um. It's super drapey. I love it, and mm-hmm, I'm beautiful. gonna make this top for fall. It's the Merchant and Mills top sixty four pattern which is a very simple raglan um, sleeve top. It's like a painter's top almost Mm -hmm. with two little pockets at the front. So there's... Everything has that pocket. Absolutely. Agreed. So that's what it looks like. So guilt-free because I'm planning on on, um, (laughs) casting on, on cutting (laughs) for that as soon as I finish my So How 7 tea dress. Okay. The next thing is, I was in Toronto, so we both used to live in Toronto. Um, I moved to the county four years ago, yeah. two years ago. Um, and so finally my, enough, our husbands knew each other through, they like yeah. to do car things. That's how I met Paige, through Paul. Yeah, right? which was so weird, and I was like, oh my god, she's my crafty soulmate. I was so happy that I found her, and then she moved away, but we'll not talk but about But that that's only an hour, it's <laughs> not that big deal. Yeah. Anyway, um, so anyway, I go back to Toronto a lot because my family still lives there. Um, so okay, when I was at Unit, the so Unit is a, a pretty awesome store. It's beautiful in Toronto. Beautiful I mean, there's store. a bunch of lovely stores in Toronto, but Unit is pretty amazing. And Claudia, who owns the store, is really yeah. fun. Hi, Claudia. Yeah, and she's done a great job. She has like when I went because I hadn't been there when I lived there, and Andrea told me about it. I told Claudia that I was like, I want to live in this place. Sure, yeah. <laughs> like it's beautiful. So I had a quick visit there and I bought myself a kit to make the Jack Tar bag by Merchant and Mills. So it's a bucket style uh, bag with pockets inside and a leather handle as well as two other fabric handles. Um, and she's put together these kits where the hardware is here, like, you know, the, the um, all and of the little things that you need. That? Yeah. And then totally departing from my norm, I, instead of buying navy blue, which is what I usually do. Yeah, but then that's sort of like the, it's not as bright, but it's yeah. the mustard. So that's what I said to Andrea. Like, if you're, if you feel you can't wear the mustard, but you love it, like, just get make it socks yeah. or make a, accessories. That... So this is called uh, cumin. Uh, and then the lining is going to be this uh, linen. 
that's gray with a little bit of sparkle motion yeah, on it, I which like it. I love because really mm-hmm. sparkle motion is just. Oh, we're it's going a, the wrong way. No, it's so nice. So anyway, so I may make that this fall. And this is kind of what the le- not kind of this is what the leather <laughs> band looks like. It kind of looks like this leather band that I'm holding in front of you. And then I don't want to open these. No, but don't it open just that. Yeah. So that's just like the closures and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then my final fashion handsman is. There's this fantastic fiber festival in Prince Edward County. It happens in May. It's happened for two years in a row now, mm-hmm. and I hope that they bring it next year as well. And uh, the vendors are great. Mm-hmm. And uh, Riverside Studio has come both years. So again, And she also has an Etsy shop. Totally departing mm-hmm. from my norm. I got this colorway called Grello, which is the mustard... And the gray. I have that too. I have it in the single ply. And I think I may make socks out of this. Mm-hmm. In that... my new sock bag. It's the sock. It's the oh, yeah. Okay. So I may I may have mm-hmm. to cast this on in my Did new Christine sock bag. Did Christine get that too? I think so. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of us who went to. <laughs> We're all like buying the same thing. Really I, I, although I had mine before. Yeah. I had bought mine. I think I bought mine. Did I buy mine at Twist? You may have. So yeah. I bought it and then, but mine's a single ply, so I can't make socks. Well, I don't want to make socks out of it. And then I was trying to match it up with something to do like a two skein shawl so I could, you know, use it. Um, but I couldn't really find anything. So I ended up getting another skein from Riverside that's kind of like these kinds of grays and the lighter gray. Right. So that it'll work so together. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I don't wear this against my face, although I may have to make a sweater out of this color just for fun. But um, you could do it like where that's the color in the yoke. True. You like know? the humulus. Yeah. By, uh, Isabel mm. Kramer. Amazing oh. yoke sweater. Anyway. Um, Elizabeth Kramer is my. She's amazing. I've heard of you, my girlfriend. This lady has a fantastic, she's an indie dyer yeah. out of, I want to say Chelsea, Quebec, but it's not. It's somewhere near there. It's like. Does it say? Wakefield, Quebec, mm. which is not far from Chelsea. Anyway. Yeah, um, so yeah just she, and she does have lots of stuff in her Etsy shop. Yeah, so so she's great. And, and she out. also sells gradient kits and a bunch mm. of other stuff, which yeah, is fun. she does. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. So that's it for me for stash enhancements. Okay, um, we got through a lot of crafty stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to hand this to you. And Thank you. So um, on, I kind of do a little bit of, segment stuff on my Instagram where I do like a uh, second time around is because I love secondhand stuff and finding deals so I'll post about that or and then another thing I do a lot is called currently on the nightstand because I am an avid reader as is Andrea so I always post uh, what I'm reading because I love getting uh, recommendations from other people and a lot of people know that I read a lot so they ask me what I'm reading mm-hmm. so I always just post what I'm reading I sometimes talk about it if it has a story or something and then I'll just kind of uh write what's like on the back cover to give you a synopsis of what the book is so uh I thought that would be or we thought it would be a great thing to add to the podcast just because we both enjoy reading so much and I really am a big promoter of people reading anyway read a book people (laughs) uh or two two. (laughs) whatever okay so currently I'm reading oh my god well, okay, so at, at some point I'm gonna know that I have to go this way. Uh, the Girl in the Spider's Web by David Leger Krantz, however you say it. I'm the worst at pronouncing things. You will learn that over time. So this is actually the fourth book in the Lizbeth Slander, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. So what's interesting about this is that the original author of that series passed away after yeah. the third book was finished which is kind of terrible because it was such a great series and I guess he didn't really get to enjoy all of the fruits of his labor but uh anyway so this is written by a different author and I kind of was like not really sure how I felt about reading this book but I just saw a trailer for this movie Uh. which I didn't even know they were making I really enjoyed uh the movies actually the um, Swedish version. I don't remember. I watched those. I actually and With I read and I read. Know me rap- race race rapace. I, I don't know how you say porn. her name. I didn't yeah. watch the. I, probably the I didn't love yeah. like the American ones were fine, but I, I kind of felt those. like why did you need to do that because the other ones were so good. Were so good. They yeah. I love like and the books were so good. Sorry, I'm like I read. Here. I read. 
Let me be Vanna. Yeah, Great. thank you. So, yeah. and it's funny because when I read the first one, I started in the first hundred pages, I was like, oh my God, this is like the most boring book in my life. But then once you get past that, it's yeah. like, yeah. it was so They were great books yeah. in, in the book. In the um, book really so yeah, I wasn't sure about this, but then I saw the trailer and Claire Foy, wah, the girl uh-huh. who plays the queen in The Crown, uh, the TV series Netflix, The Crown, mm-hmm. is... Elizabeth Slander, and she, which is like a total departure character, crazy. So, uh, and it looked amazing. So then it got me thinking. I always like to kind of read the book first before I watch anything. Yeah. So like I, I just read, um, oh my gosh, what's that? Big Little Lies. Oh, okay. So I wanted to read that before I watched the series, which I did. Um, so I picked, I was finished my last book so I picked this up so so far so good I'm just like about a hundred pages in so I can't really say for sure but you say that you like to read before you watch the movies so when Lord of the Rings was all the rage I didn't grow up in North America so where I grew up Lord of the Rings books were not popular Mm -hmm. books were not popular let's just say that anyway um but I was adamant I was gonna read every single one of Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings before I watched the movies I did not enjoy them and everyone's like (laughs) what I'm like I am not a fantasy reader like it's just not my genre mm. at all yeah. but i man i stuck to it and i read them all and then we had like, that's, a movie pretty, marathon. Hardcore. that's yeah. pretty hardcore yeah i've heard a lot i haven't read those because i'm not a big fantasy person either but what i heard that people had difficulty with with those books was this that like there's a lot of detail yeah and it's like okay yeah. irrelevant irrelevant yeah. irrelevant <laughs> get to the good part get to the it's kind of like i love the outlander series but like i find sometimes it does go on and you're like okay get to the sex get to the sex um get yeah get to the sex get to the sex okay good and then i've not read those yeah who's sassy now hmm? who's sassy now get to the sex get to the sex get to the sex Come on, people. Hello. Um, but you're enjoying this. So far, yeah. Good. So I think, and I think it's good because it's been uh, long enough for me since reading the last ones that I'm not so, like, remembering the style right. so much of the last author. So I feel like I'm not as impacted as I would be by, like, any kind of differences in right. their writing style. Like, it's pretty similar, but, um, yeah, I feel like maybe if I had it had been closer than I would have felt more like, mm, this doesn't really fit, but right. we'll see. But so far, so good. Yeah, it's only, it's hardcover though, so it's like, at night, I'm like, because I always read just before I go to sleep, so the last few nights I've been tired and been asking my husband if he can hold my book up for Oh me. yeah, hilarious. No. no. The answer to that no, is no. I wouldn't think he would be yeah for that. <laughs> um, so what I'm reading, I actually haven't gotten very far into this book, um, it's called Blackwater Bluff by S.M. Hurley. So there's another backstory to this. Um, it's a murder mystery. I don't ever read murder mysteries. Like, it's just not my thing. But it is set in Prince Edward County, and mm. I used to work with the author, which is oh, a yeah. pseudonym for one of the local lawyers. Oh, someone else I know is reading that book. Yeah. Okay, it's funny, because when I saw that you were going to talk about that, I was like, is that the same book that Margaret's reading? Probably. Yeah. Anyway, okay. that author is lovely. Yeah. Um, she's a fantastic woman, and uh, and I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's a little bit lawyerly so far, because there's a crown attorney in place, and and, you know, it's like they talk about the ambulance mm. ride between the county and Belleville, which is half an hour. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's developing into a nice story, so. I might have to borrow that. Yeah. 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 It's you funny because, yeah, my friend Margaret just asked me about that. Yeah. Oh, good. So, yeah, you That's can have it when I'm yeah. there. So. It's yeah. nice to read stuff when you have some reference. Um, yeah. You know, well, I about the locale oh, and stuff. Cool. Well, and, book, so. um, in the county, there's like a lot of people that like entrepreneurs and it is like a small town, but there's kind of, it's kind of a nice small town that has a lot of different things going on, a lot yeah. of artists and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of entrepreneurs. So I think that we really try to support yeah. the people who do uh, things locally, mostly because we want to keep those things yeah. and keep things happening in the county. To well, keep and it... Sheila was writing this book when mm-hmm. I was working with her, so mm-hmm. it was kind of it's kind of cool to you know yeah. say okay, well the book's out, right. right? So yeah, and it's just I I really love that you know like coming from a big city and then moving to a small town to be like you know like how you can support a small business like has mm-hmm. a really big impact on people mm-hmm. and like I love that. So if my friends are doing things, like I really. 
uh, most of the time it's stuff I would like anyway, so it's yeah. like a no-brainer that I would support them, but it's just, I think that's really important. Anyways, yeah. enough about that. <laughs> uh, so the last segment for today is going to be just kind of news and upcoming items. So we are, or we did talk about planning a trip to yeah, Twist. Yeah, I have that news for you. It's the weekend that I have to go to that wedding. <sighs> Sorry. So Twist is a big festival that happens in Quebec. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been going on for many years. It's actually just about an hour and a half away from Ottawa, maybe. It's about three mm -hmm. hour drive from here in a small town called saint andre Abelin. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> uh, saint andre Abelin. Yeah. I don't know. I don't she even know how to say right. I don't know. Um, I may be butchering, but whatever. You're not. Anyway, it's, uh, it's big. It's, I think it's probably one of the biggest fiber festivals eastern in the eastern part of the country. Yeah. Although there's that one in New Brunswick, and I don't know. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, Maybe we need to go there and Karen start. went last year. She really enjoyed it. Anyway, oh, yeah? so we, we went last year. We just did it as a day trip, um, mm. and it was lots of fun. It was it so was much great. fun. yeah. And we had great poutine afterwards. We did. <laughs> anyway. Um, which is Putin. like obviously if you're Canadian, if you're you know, going to like, Quebec, you have yeah, to. Yeah, you, that's where poutine is from. And for people who live under a rock, poutine is basically fries with gravy and cheese curds it's on top. Amazing. And um, yeah, yeah, and we just went to like the that. chip truck locally. Yeah, it's so good, it was so good. <laughs> um, and there was lots of yarny deliciousness. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, then well. there was also yes, yarn, like we bought lots of yarn. Contrary to what Paige just saw you, I actually came back with a haul from. Yeah, I bought La Bienname, I bought uh, that Illimani yarn. I'm going to get that because it's right That Illimani yarn. Paige described it as being as soft as baby's eyelashes. Clouds in baby's yeah. eyelashes. Anyway, it's amazing. And we bought the same thing because we're going to make the same sweater because yeah. we're going to use twinsies. Because <laughs> we couldn't resist. It's uh, Illimani. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. You, I think like, all you of their yarn is made in Bolivia. And it's uh, the it's the basis mm -hmm. Emily. It's like and it's like a chain yarn. I don't think you can see yeah. it, but it's unlike any chain yarn I've ever seen because it's. it's we just actually so... say what's in it besides clouds and baby's eyes no, eyelashes. And that's probably what they made it out of. Oh, it <laughs> <laughs> obviously, <laughs> it's fifty six percent fifty six percent mulberry silk. 40% baby alpaca and 4% merino. It's amazing. And it is the softest 100% thing. like amazing. You guys, I'm like on the other side of the booth and all of a sudden there's Paige with two yard, two skeins in her hand. And, and a, like, a sea of people between Andrea, us. you gotta touch this! <laughs> it was like the craziest thing. It is honestly the softest thing It was I've awesome. Ever it was awesome. It and was then they had, of course, because they're smart, had a sweater sample. Yes. So, right, so we're obviously buying we that. We bought that. Yeah, of course we bought that. And we Anyways, bought the so, same color too. So there's a bunch of people who are thinking of going. Our friend Carrie, with whom mm -hmm. we made the uh, kimono, uh, Christine was thinking about it. Is she? Uh, she? Yeah, I think so. I think um, Megan. But I sadly cannot go because I am going to a wedding that weekend. So that's that. They can get married another day. Yeah, I don't think they're going to go for that. All right. Um, so uh, we're just going to talk about some of the upcoming projects that we have coming up. So uh, my dad is a crazy woodworking guy. So this summer I built, we built uh, three uh, raised beds. So they're self-watering beds because... Self-watering? Yeah. Whoa. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> It's so really funny. just a young guy out there holding the hose. No, just kidding. Like the gardener? Yeah, the, the gardener. Uh, so basically, our soil here is terrible. It's basically mm -hmm. uh, rock. And that's under... what makes it be such a good place for wine in yeah. Southern County. The terroir. Yeah, terroir is yeah exactly. Good. So anyways, yeah. it's not great for me trying to grow tomatoes or anything that I want to live in. To try to dig in the soil is crazy so I built these raised beds and now I have all my tomatoes in them 
And so my next thing that I've been super excited about is I want to build a free library stand. I don't mm -hmm. know, in Toronto and in Kingston, they're quite popular um, where people have kind of little houses and they fill them with books and it's kind of like a take one, leave one scenario. Yeah. Anyways, I'm told like obviously with my reading situation, I have a lot of, I usually get my books secondhand, so I usually just give them away when I'm done. Uh, so I was thought that that would be a great idea to like have on our street where people could stop by and read and get some books. So uh, he might be here this weekend to help me with that, but that's kind of my next big project that I'm excited about. Cool. Um, is that, that's it. That's it? Okay. There's I, other things, but like, again, yeah. like I start a million, so yeah, I've got things, so. a million plans, but the big thing that I'm excited about, actually, I'm not excited about it. I'm excited about the afterwards <laughs> part. So I basically got shamed by Carrie and Paige to sign up for this 57 kilometer bike ride. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I used to be a big cyclist. Like when I lived in Toronto, I biked everywhere. My bike was my car. I'm not bike for like four years. And in fact, biking in the country is a little bit dangerous because the freaking dogs follow you. And then you're like, oh my God, it's coming from my leg. Anyway, so, you know, Paige says, Sorry, Carrie suggested it. It's a 58 kilometer bike ride in the Napanee area. And it starts and ends at the McKinnon Brewing Company, which is delicious beer made locally. And I think you stop, you stop at a few places. Like you stop at a winery and I think you stop at like some kind of like Peel by gallery. Peel by like there's make, stops in between where you actually get off your bike. Anyway, I thought 58 kilometers, I'm doing the math. I'm like, that's going to be like two and a half hours if you're going at a pretty good clip. It's gonna be way more than that because I have like no stamina, right? Like I'm old now, I got gray hair. Anyway, so um, I'm like, I don't know, guys, that sounds really long. And these two were like, piece of cake, sign up. So I've signed up and now my project is gonna be to go biking so that I'm not like freaking dying her, her, at the end of it, right? I need so, to have that project of yeah. What I need to do is build a callus so, on my ass. Paul, actually, my husband, took my bicycle to Kingston today so that I can have it tuned up. And then my plan oh, is okay. to get out to Wolf Island a couple times a week after work, oh, which will get idea. me outside and that's just start idea. slow and, you know, just go for it. So that's that's going to be my project. I'll tell you guys how it goes. I'm not very athletic at all. No. You'll have to shame me because I haven't done anything. Yeah. I did I'm a 25K be... bike ride earlier this year <laughs> and my ass was like... Yeah, that's my problem. Like, I don't have a problem with anything else other than my ass hurting. Oh, I, I'm just like a little worried about it. But, but the beer at the end. Of the yeah, and that's the thing with this one. You, you're stopping, so you know. I feel like if you were just doing it straight, it would be a bit of a different story. Anyway, wish me luck. I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna be there. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> She'll yeah. probably kill me if yeah, it doesn't go know. well. So it's fine. No, it'll be fine. Do you want to talk about podcasts that we watch, or do you want to skip that, or? Yeah, I want to know what this is. Oh, oh, that's something that I do. I um, I love the mail, like, like real mail, like, like, like snail mail, like writing letters and putting a stamp on it and putting it in the envelope and sending it. So I was actually my boss asked for a stamp today, and I was like. Who has stamps anymore? I do in my wallet, like right I actually, here. And I actually I've have got international in my for my friends around the world, oh, US fine. and Canadian. And so I write letters to people and um, Are they expecting me Nobody to ever them? writes back, I will say that. So if that's you want a letter from me, that's nice. put it in the comments and I'll send you a letter. I love letters. Isn't it so nice to just get letters in the mail? Yeah, so, well, that's like um, the Periscoping sisters have something. It's not a letter, but they send like this like unicorn thing. So it goes like all around the world. Uh, and then I think you're supposed to do something. I don't really know. No, I just send anyways. letters. Just no unicorn, letters. But. No unicorn, just letters. Anyway, so that's, that's Okay, me. okay. Yeah. Sorry, so, she had that in her so notes. So I've done and I was like, a little bit of letter writing this week because I've been off work. So I've had the time to like sit down and put together letters and that's nice. like the envelope and put a stamp on it and send it. So. Remember what happened to George Costanza's wife when she licked all those She died. Up? It was swift though. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. You go fast, man. It's all I gotta okay, say. Well, that's anyway, good. As, yeah. as long as you've thought it through, then yeah, that's Yeah, I've great. thought it through. Um, so yeah, so um, 
it took me a while to get Andrea onto the podcast thing. <laughs> so I was kind of telling her about it and she was like not really having any of it. She doesn't watch any TV or anything. So, um, so you did watch a few grocery girls and you watched, I think you watched this Foss Tricot and a, maybe a couple other ones. Yeah, I watched, but, but the first podcast I ever watched, which I got onto about a year ago, was in Spanish. So mm -hmm. it's Jorge Locatelli and her friend Vero, Veronica, uh, who have a podcast called uh, Las Knitting Amigas, which is the knitting friends in Spanish. The whole thing happens in Spanish. I speak Spanish. It's my mother tongue. And so Jorge is in Buenos Aires and Vero is in Montevideo, Uruguay. And so on the screen, you see this, but it's like a line. Yeah. And one of them is, I think they're FaceTiming. I don't know. I'm yeah, that's what the periscoping system is. Oh, too, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. And they, and I learned how to knit in English. And, you know, they both speak some, well, they both speak English. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the terms and their unravelry and all of that will be said in English. But a lot of it will come out in Spanish. And I'm like, oh, that's how you say that. Anyway, so I've been watching that one religiously. Mm -hmm. But then this week, I've been binge watching all the other podcasts you told me I had to and I did my homework and and it was fun I'm just not a screen person I'm not really I'm, I don't watch tv I don't anyway and here I am okay so say the ones that you like oh okay so I like um Las Nitin Amigas I like By the Lakeside which is Sandy from Ajax which is just about an hour away from Toronto um and and of course the grocery girls that's about it. Yeah. But you like the Chelsea Pearls. Oh, I love the yeah. Chelsea Pearls. They're, so, they're so I... Fun. But that was on yours. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We can I didn't want to steal like that one. Thing. Okay, good. Uh, so, basically, um, like, obviously, I watch the Grocery Girls because who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> um, and I'm kind of, like, if I start a podcast and I, like, binge watch all of them. So, I kind of just am pretty monogamous to, like, work through all of the past episodes. Um, so, Grocery Girls and Espostrico is probably one of my favorite um, uh, podcasts. And then, <clears throat> I haven't watched that many by the lakeside, but I thought that you would really like Well, she that. has all the sewing, so that's yeah. fun for me. So, and I actually need to go and look for some sewing podcasts, because I've not watched yeah, any of them. Yeah. So. So yeah, I saw a couple, I think I saw two of hers and thought that you would like that mm -hmm. one. But then one of the ones that I watched with her, with Sandy, was she mentioned the Chelsea Pearls. So I, I watched them and they're awesome. They're Christina so and Miriam are so funny. funny. I love, love And they're that. just like hanging out. Yeah. Like it's out. just like, <laughs> yeah. So I really like, and again, I haven't watched all of those ones yet, but um, that'll totally be one that I uh, yeah. binge watch. So I really like that one. But yeah, I, it's for me, I go on and off, like, where I'm, like, constantly watching, and then sometimes I'm not, so it just depends for me. And then the other thing I wanted to mention for, like, non-knitting stuff is um, the M.I. Gardner, like, Michigan M.I. So, uh, I'm, like, really kind of new at gardening. She's amazing. She's totally down playing it. I'm She's not. really... Funny. I'm not. Uh, especially vegetables. Uh, so... That's, like, it's totally your jam. Jam. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, I found this guy that um, he doesn't really have a podcast. He, as much as he like posts videos about gardening, um, food gardening, um, or vegetable, <laughs> vegetable gardening as real adults call it. Um, anyway, so he has amazing videos about just about everything. And he's kind of funny, so I recommend him if you're looking for any... I just kind of watch them. Sometimes I search for things specifically, like the other day my tomatoes were getting blossom end rot, which is basically when your tomato fruit, when it's ripening, gets like kind of rotted on the bottom. And so I wasn't really sure why that was happening. Apparently that's happening for one of two reasons. Either they're not getting watered consistently enough mm. or they need calcium oh. so I think the watering was potentially a problem because I had these raised beds and it's been really dry here this summer and basically the, the way the beds work is there's like a water table underneath and then it, you fill it with water and then the soil and the plants wick up the water but you have to kind of fill it first and 
anyways, I did that, but I, I guess I thought it was watering the plants more than it was. So I've been watering them or adding water to it now just because of how dry it's been just to make sure. But then the other thing he recommended for the calcium deficiency was to actually just crush up Tums. No. And put them in the water and then water. Wow. The, yeah, so we had some Tums here and so that's what I did. So um, hopefully, so you can't fix the blossom end drop once it's like on the fruit. You basically just have to pick the fruit off um, or the tomato, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then you can fix it on the plant for like subsequent blossoms or fruits right. or tomatoes. So anyway, so I've done that. So hopefully, um, but my, other than that, my tomatoes are doing like pretty crazy in my planters. They're like ginormous. Nice. So anyways, he has really good tips if you want to start gardening or even if you know stuff, he has some really good advice about how to do things and he tries all different stuff and he even like has recommendations on like soils and additives and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, good tips. Good. I think we're done. We well, thanks for, for watching really guys. If anybody's watching, I mean, quite frankly, this is going out there whenever yeah. Paige figures yeah. out the technical <laughs> Whenever I things. know what I'm doing. So and yeah. And it's, uh... Yeah. yeah, so obviously if you want to subscribe, that's amazing, or comment, or like, because that's what makes things go out in the world, or not, or we can just watch ourselves talk about things that we like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, and I'm not sure how often we'll plan to do this. Yeah. Um, sometimes our schedules are a bit hectic, and... Well, it's hard, because I'm only here on the weekend, so if Paige has uh, something going on on the weekend that we can't meet, and... Uh... So yeah, I would say probably like roughly once a month or something. Yeah. Um, and then that, that'll give us time to, when we're not, when we're not, when we are working to finish stuff. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Cause this is an anomaly for me. Like to bang out two dresses in a week never happens. So. Although I feel like this might motivate us to, I hope so. Get... I need a sewing machine in Kingston. Anyway. I need a serger. I love my serger. Great. I haven't sewn anything. I don't. The last thing I need is a serger. Anyway. Um, okay. Great. So well, thank you so much lot, for guys. watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, leave any comments or feedback. And um, hopefully, we'll be slightly less awkward the next time. Yeah. Or and, not. Or maybe because that's just how we are. I think this was long. Maybe we'll go shorter. Anyway. Um, no, it's not too it's bad. It's an hour. Too bad. Yeah. Plus the thing that didn't. Yeah, go. Anyway. that was the only like. Yeah seven minutes okay anyway, anyway high five that was awesome great thanks guys bye, bye.